Welcome to the Business with Beers podcast. This is the place where we help entrepreneurs expand their business, build their wealth, and generate passive income. I'm your host, Brian Beers, an entrepreneur who's on a mission to inspire growth from everyone around me. Remember that you need to take the actions others won't, and you can live the life that others don't. Please be sure to check out my weekly newsletter that now drops every Thursday. It includes one quote, one tweet, one podcast recommendation, plus some business and investing insight from me. It's short and it's sweet. My goal is to provide you with just a couple gold nuggets to help inspire your growth. Go to brianbeers.com to subscribe. Hello, everyone. I'm excited today to bring you John Edwin. John is an entrepreneur, a real estate investor, a capital raiser, a podcast host, and a good friend of mine. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, Brian, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on Business with Beers. Let's go. That's right. Yep. So awesome. So I always like to start with some background. So could you give us an idea of you graduate college or high school, you're 18 years old. What do you kind of do next on your journey that kind of gets you to kind of where we're at today? If you can give us an idea of that to start and then we'll go from there. Yeah, if I can go back a, a little earlier, um, you know, I grew up, my father actually uh, was an immigrant from Pakistan. He came over in his mid 20s. And uh, it's it's cool when you hear these stories um, of immigrants and how they came over. And, and we're talking about going back to the 60s. So things were a lot different. Um, I can remember him sharing a story that uh, when he was when he was flying over, he literally sewed six dollars into his shirt because he was afraid someone was going to take it from him. And to hear his story of coming over, <clears throat> you know, sleeping in his uncle's basement, um, working in a bubblegum factory in North Philadelphia and putting himself through Temple Business School. And when you hear these stories of immigrants coming over and uh, a lot of people have these types of stories uh, and just the American dream dream gives so much hope. So that's kind of what I wanted to start with. And then um, growing up, I grew up in the inner city of Philadelphia, um, rough area, um, had a lot of fun, got in a lot of trouble. Um, but one of the things that was my motivation in life were my parents, um, they had a tumultuous relationship. They're both wonderful people, but um, just had, uh, you know, it was it, coming home. I never knew kind of what I was walking into, uh, whether it was going to be turmoil or whether it was going to be peaceful. And uh, and and I grew up that way. And, and when I was 14, my parents split and my mom moved me out of the city to a suburban high school uh, where I actually, um, you know, it's interesting. I, 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 I always use the quote, nothing ever happens to us. Everything happens for us. And at that time in life, I was uh, really having a hard time because I moved out of the neighborhood I grew up in, didn't know anybody. And uh, it was interesting because a year and a half later, I started dating my girlfriend, uh, who's now my wife of 22 years. Uh, so Christine and I, there's there's a shout out for you, Christine. We've been dating since we were 16. And, um, you know, you asked, uh, what, you know, my, my transition out, out of high school. And um, I was a good athlete. I went to Liberty University to run track and field. Um, and... Uh, you know that was my sole purpose which was interesting and when i got there i really got into um school and academics um thought i was going to graduate and then go into uh getting my doctorate in physical therapy and took a different route actually um didn't didn't uh, look physical therapists are great not saying anything negative but it wasn't for me uh so i got out of got out of school and uh i loved working out got right into personal training uh, and then became really successful right out of the gate, uh, which was which was amazing. Got married at 21, and uh, by the time I was 22, I was the top trainer in the entire East Coast region of uh, of the United States. Uh, so where do we want to take this from here, Brian? Wow, man, that's a great story. I never knew that about your your uh, granddad. That's 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 really no cool. my my father. Oh, not my, yeah, father. yeah, my father. Even cooler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you talk about like starting six dollars and building it up to go to you know, go to temple and get a degree and then, you know, obviously raise, raise some good kids. So, and then your, your quote about everything that happens for us, right? If your parents didn't have turmoil, you wouldn't have moved. You wouldn't have met your wife, right? You would have been yep. maybe on a different track that maybe wouldn't have been as good if you stayed in that neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows where I'd be. <laughs> so, um, that's awesome. So then what is, how, how do you become the top trainer? Like, what does that, what does that mean? How is that tracked? I mean, I, so so yeah that is it that's a fantastic question because anybody could say that right i'm a yeah, top yeah. trainer yeah, but you gotta you gotta so, yeah it has to be quantified so uh so at that time when i was 22 i was working with a company called town sports international and you'll know it better by philadelphia sports clubs hmm. new york sports clubs 
Boston sports clubs, Washington sports clubs. They've got like hundreds, if not thousands of gyms all on the East Coast. And um, they, the top 20 trainers out of, again, thousands of trainers that work for the company, uh, the top 20, they they call the top trainer uh, on the East Coast and they'll, you know, there's a whole weekend about it and all that. And uh, so I was always either number one or number two uh, every year in sheer volume. I was doing thousands of training sessions uh, annually at the time. Okay. What, what do you think made you, what are some of those qualities that think you made you better than everybody else at it? Um, great, fantastic question. Actually, when I was in college, I sold Cutco Cutlery, which um, I, I started doing that at 18. At 19, I became a branch manager for the company, uh, took all these leadership uh, courses and um, and courses on sales and, and how to you know present myself. Really, it's all about communication. So literally like we had, I think at the time, we had like 27 trainers at our location, you know, throughout the day. And um, most of the trainers would be hanging out in the l- little room where their training room is or whatever. I'd always be out on the floor talking to members. I was um, really sharp from the beginning where I would use my sweat equity uh, and just just be talking to a member and like, hey, I'll, I'll give you a free session. Tell me what you want to work on and help them out. And, and really from that contribution, they automatically wanted to start training with me. And, um, you know, I just became really well yeah, known that, that quickly sales and that drive and that hustle versus like everyone's taking this passive approach and you're like active and like trying to build a business. Right. Yeah. And you know what, Brian, let me expand for a second. Actually, I'm going to give your, your, your listeners something even more incredible because we live in a time that's the now generation, right? It's right now. What can yep. you give me right now? What I'm entitled to this, man. I'm a title, right. but, uh, but, but I didn't grow up with that type of mindset, man. When you're raised by an immigrant, you're, you're, you're not entitled to anything. Actually, you're, you better earn that. You better earn it. Uh, so I'd be up at like four 30 every morning. I'd be in the gym by five 30 and, uh, I was only on the clock. I was making eight bucks an hour outside of training. I was only on the clock from uh, till 2 p.m. So I'd get there at 5.30, shift would start 6 a.m., go 6 to 2. But I would be in that gym 5.30 a.m. till 6 p.m. every damn day, bro. So whether I was getting paid or not, everybody knew who I was. So I wasn't I wasn't afraid to put that hard work in and I earned it. Yep. That's awesome. So where do you go from there? How do you, I know you, you kind of have a, a pretty good size real estate portfolio as of today, a lot of, a lot of rentals. And your wife's like very active in real estate as well. Kind of, how did you make that jump into, you know, training and, and selling and all the stuff to, to get into the real estate business? Yeah. So um, when uh, Christine and I were 24, we actually had our first child, uh, Luke. Uh, we have three amazing kids. They're all now teenagers. Luke, Sylvie, and Caleb. Shout out to you guys. Um, but we had Luke, and uh, and I tell this story whenever I'm interviewed because it's it's a, it's a powerful story and it's my why. Um, So if you're listening, I want you to understand that whenever you do something and if you wanna achieve something great, you need a why. And if your why is powerful enough, the how takes legs. So have a strong why and the how takes legs. Here's my why. When I was 25, um, my son, my oldest at the time was one and my wife and her family were big Disney people and they were going down to Disney World. And I was super busy training clients, but when I'm not there, I don't make any money. So uh, so it wasn't the cost of me going to Disney. It was the it was the cost of what I was going to lose by not working. So I said, hey, babe, you should you should take Luke. You you and him go with your family down to Disney. I got to keep working, you know, make sure our, our bills are paid and everything else. And I was training a successful client at the time, uh, Carol Lissack. She always gets a shout out. And uh, we had a conversation and I was kind of sad telling her like, oh, man, I'm missing like my son's first vacation and they're at Disney and kind of wish I were there. And uh, she said something very powerful to me. She said, John, you need to learn to make money in your sleep. She said, you know, if I'm sick or uh, I just don't feel like going to work or whatever, she's like, that those checks are still coming in. And I was like, whoa, how do I do that? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. That was my thing. I was 25. I said, how does that work? And she said, well, you know, you got to start earning real estate. She's like, and then when you have real estate, you you buy more and then tenants, they go to work for you. They go out to work every single day to pay rent, which pays your mortgage down, which pays your taxes, which you make money on. And, And I was totally, my mind was bent. And I thought, uh, I got to do this. So yeah, within 12 months after that conversation, I bought my first investment property, did everything wrong as anybody in real estate does, you know, you do everything wrong the first few and uh, 
that was 18 years ago. And then you buy one and then the next year you buy another one, the next year you buy another one. But then the next year, it's like that lily pad theory. Next year you buy three, the next year you buy five and then the next year you buy another five, the next year you buy 10. You just keep going. Yep. And so how many do you guys own today? Uh, right now we bought, we currently are holding 54 doors. We've bought 62 total properties. Now, when I say doors, that's uh, small, yeah. that includes small multis and all that. So I've done about 40 flips, uh, holding 54 doors and had 62, 63, 64 uh, settlements. Okay. And that 63 settlements include some of those flips or just other rentals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That includes flips. Yeah. Because, you know, like, like the small multis there between like, you yeah. know, two, three, four, five, six units each. Okay. One of, one of the things you mentioned to me earlier um, that you just got into was, was capital raising, right? So raising money for other people doing big, big multi-million dollar projects. So I guess like, to, it, what, like what's your take on now that you've like raised money for that and kind of see how that works? Like, are you going to continue the kind of single family small thing or do you kind of like, does your mind get open to some of these bigger things? Man, that's a fantastic uh, question. Uh, more, more advanced. I like it. Um, so yes and yes. Um, for those of you, a little backstory was I've been investing. Well, I've invested with different syndications with other GoBundance members, but um, also have been investing over the last three years with a friend of mine who does land development. And so basically it's short term stuff. You invest when he's like close to finishing up his entitlements. And, uh, you know, within three to six months, I get my money back at a high interest. Uh, it just helps him bridge to the next one and then the next one. And so I was doing that for a couple years and a year ago, uh, he said, hey, do you think you could help me raise money? He's like, I I'll, I'll pay you for it because it's your time. I said, yeah, there's there's plenty of guys that I know would love to get involved in something like this. Uh, so I kind of it kind of fell in my lap through our relationship. And then in 2022, I raised millions um, for him and uh, and helped my friends make money. And now uh, now I'm actually partnered in some projects with him that are super exciting. Um, but I'm still buying multi-unit. I'm still buying small multi-units. Okay. I'm looking at one this weekend. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because part of it is like you already have the infrastructure, right? What's one more? What's two more? But then at the same token, like if you go out and buy a 50 unit, you just double your doors, right? In one deal. Uh, yep. One, yep. One roof, right? <laughs> and 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 by the way, that's all that's all on the table this year. I'm looking by the end of this year. I think there's going to be a lot of people that have to refi out. And now that the rates are higher, they're yep. going to have trouble because they're, you know, their, their caps going down and and I'm going to I'm going to take advantage of that and scoop up some what, portfolio. What was the biggest challenge raising, raising money? Um you know, I think the biggest challenge for most people is trust, uh which I've been really um I want to say blessed about where um I've always been my word to everybody. I mean, my credit score is yeah, over 800. Patience. Yeah, I have a I have a really strong reputation. I don't ask anybody for anything and I don't pressure anybody into this. I just say, hey, you know, the, the cool thing, too, that builds trust, Brian, is when you say, hey, I'd recommend to invest in this. And then you say, and by the way, I'm investing, you know, 150, 200,000 myself. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, they're putting their skin in the game. Yeah, yeah let me do that. I think the other thing that helps, too, is is passion, right? Like passion is contagious. So like any salesperson, you're going to sell something and you're passionate about you. You believe in whatever you're selling. Like it's, it's contagious. It's like COVID people catch it. Right. And they believe in it. And so for like you and these yeah. deals, like you invested with this guy, you made all this money. You like, you're passionate about him and his deals because you, you believe in it. So it's really easy for people to feel that energy and believe you versus it was, I don't know, some random guy that came to you. Maybe you knew him and maybe he had a track record, but you didn't like have that connection. I think it'd be a lot harder for you to like, people wouldn't feel that same, that same passion. Hundred uh, percent. You know, I've had a relationship with my friend Tim for over twenty years. I actually was his trainer in my twenties, which is wild. I helped him lose over a hundred pounds, uh, and I was training him and, and his wife. What's that? He owes you. <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. but you know, it's a uh, it, it's a blessing to have been able to uh, even build trust where he would he would ask me to now you know so many years later he doesn't owe me anything you know it's just like it's just like hey John are, are you interested in this because we've just remained friends and and it was just awesome yep hey one of the, the topics I want to pivot to here is talking about you know marriage and family and being a good father you know while building a successful business I think it's something that 
you know, we're both in abundance, but we have these higher, you know, net worth, you know, entrepreneurs who are like super focused and driving on creating the biggest, you know, this business we can. And I think sometimes, you know, sometimes people have a tendency to maybe lose track of what really matters, which is like, you know, their family and their personal health and relationships. And so uh, I know it's something that you really like to talk about and you, you have some, some excellent insights on. So what do you kind of, how do you view, I don't know, the family being a father and like balancing all that with, with building a business and then being able to provide a great life so uh here's a shameless plug it doesn't have anything to do with me but it, it could help uh listeners uh my friend john vroman started a community called front road dads that i highly recommend john and i have been friends for over 20 years and i was fortunate to uh have been to the first conference that they had actually ironically in philly which was amazing but um you know, I, I feel that before I'm a businessman, before being an entrepreneur, I'm a husband. And then after being a husband, I'm a father. And those are those are the two biggest uh, goals for me as as a man. Uh, and then everything else is secondary. So, yeah, I love I'm a super driven guy. I love uh, building businesses. I love to uh, scale um, and hit financial goals. That's a way to keep score. But more importantly, is the base of of my family, and that's that's the strength of my marriage, and that's the that's the strength of my relationship with my kids. Um, you know, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, and and uh, and I think that's a big deficiency because we're we're all really hard charging men, and it's easy to get uh, pretty neurotic about hitting certain goals, and you can easily leave people behind in that process because you do have to give things up and if you're so uh so headstrong about hitting certain goals uh unfortunately the the home relationship can can suffer yep yeah so what are some of the things that you've done or that you've seen work in terms of let's start with the marriage you know with, with your with your wife to, to strengthen that so so um as you know, we we work on one sheets with GoBundance. Every year uh, we have a new one sheet. Uh, we change it quarterly depending on where we are. And for the listeners, we don't wanna leave you guys behind. So uh, to give you an insight on what a one sheet is, it's basically, as we say, it's it's like a baseball card. It's, it's the highlight reel of your life, but it's also things that you wanna be held accountable for and where your goals are, not just financially, but personally. So on my one sheet every year, I have that, I will take my wife out on a date weekly, by the way. And I've been doing this since we've been married, all through uh, having three kids. Uh, we go out on a date night. I I'm sorry, not a date night. I don't I don't want to say just a date night because sometimes it's hard to get away when you have younger kids. We yeah. go on a date at least weekly, one a week. And then quarterly, we'll go away, just her and I, um, whether it be on a little vacation, whether it be getting an Airbnb, someplace cool for a weekend, whatever it was, I'll tell you a kind of funny story. Um, <clears throat> about a year and a half ago, uh, her and I told our family and, and friends and our kids that we were going away away to an undisclosed location. We literally had a hotel 20 minutes from our house that we got, it was a cool ass like baller hotel that we just like stayed in for three days and didn't leave and just had a blast yeah that's yeah you don't necessarily have to go be this, this big trip or spend a bunch of money right it's just about spending time time together yep uh, yep it's just it's just about spending time and then with your kids um here's a plug for jimmy shields jim shields wrote a couple different books one of them's called 18 summers another one i believe it's called the uh family the family boardroom board yep yep um and and it's it's phenomenal and it's all about spending one-on-one -on -one personal time with your kids um and being intentional about that time because you know you can you can go out to lunch with your kids and then you're looking at at your cell phone you're looking at the time you have to be somewhere but when you actually talk to your kids about what they want to do and where they want to spend time um that's really powerful because now you're getting into their world and then you also have time to talk to them so you know phones have to be away you spend intentional two three four hours uh with each kid individually maybe it's a weekend maybe you go away maybe you take them skiing whatever yeah yeah i read that book it's, it's great we're working on on kind of planning that out and it's all about like you know once a once a quarter i believe is you know what his recommendation is but at a, at a regular frequency to go and, and have the, the kid really plan what they want to do and um 
sorry, my we, we're starting to do it. My six year old, my wife, take her to go get her nails done. I took her to a movie, working on going to a Flyers game. But um, but even the yeah. movie, like something. Yeah, you're creating these experiences, Brian. Yeah, like it's so simple, but like she had so much fun doing it. Like it's just me and her going to a movie. Like it's, you know, I, I don't know, you know, the smile on her face, and then you know she really enjoyed it, and um. So I think it means it means a lot, especially like the no phones. Like it's in the car, you don't have a watch. I I watch or whatever, and it's totally like, you know, attention is on is on them. And um, yeah, I mean, even like when years. Yeah, years. and when my kids were younger, uh, I used to take them to Dave and Buster's all the time individually, and then the three of them together. And you know, I mean, even something as simple as that, spending a couple hours just playing video games, you know, away from your cell phone is, it's just it's it's simple to us, but means the world to them. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think that's key. And then the 18 summer, the idea is you only have like 18 summers together, right? Before then they go to college or start their own life. And then it's like, you know, you seem a, a whole lot less. And so um, when you look at it on, on a calendar, actually do the map, it might feel like it's a long time, but it's really, you know, it's really not. So yeah, for sure. Um, can you speak a little bit about Front Row Dads, maybe a little bit more in terms of what is that, like, what, what do they do? What does that program like look like? Yeah. Um, so they, so I'm not a part of front row dads now I was for a while, but now my kids are, are older. So, um, you know, it's, I, I think it's really great and geared for people with, with younger kids, um, you know, early teens, preteens, younger than that. Um, but, but they have, uh, zoom calls. I think it's weekly or it's bi-weekly. Uh, you're part of a community and, and I don't think it's too expensive. There's a monthly fee to it, but I don't think it's too expensive to be uh, a part of that community. And then, uh, and they do, they do retreats as well and conferences, uh, where the, dads get together. I mean, right. Um, with, with just the dads and then they also do families. Okay. I, I think okay. they do, but they do both. Um, but a lot of it is, is really, um, powerful because it's just it's just dad time um and it's just the men meeting up where uh i was really i was really blown away uh johnny Berghoff and hal elrod mm -hmm. led the conference that i went to and uh we had a lot of like personal time where we had a workbook and we could like sit there and actually mm -hmm. answer questions throughout the workbook where you know you're away from your cell phone and you're sitting in your own space for like two hours in a room you can pick a different spot wherever sit in the corner wherever you want but like how often do we actually get to sit and write out our vision for being a husband our vision for being a father and how what we're currently doing and what we want to see changes um i, I just thought it was, it was just incredibly powerful and for for dads who have younger kids definitely get involved in the community yep when you did, when you did that exercise was there things that materially changed with you that like you still do today um yeah you know i've been a i've been a bit fortunate because um well you know it sounds unfortunate but because my parents had such a rough marriage that uh I learned so much on what not to do yeah. in my marriage. You know what I mean? Like things that I didn't want to see ever happen. And so I've worked really hard on, um, you know, making sure that my wife is my best friend, that we are best friends, that we are communicating, you know, right before this podcast, we were outside walking in the rain. It's like 38 degrees pouring, not pouring rain, but yeah, it was yeah. raining on us. Yeah. We both had umbrellas and we were just talking about like hey what's going on with our day today like what are you doing what am i doing you know let's talk about the weekend what are we going to do like let's talk about uh when, when we're getting together as a family like oh let's talk about our next vacation that that we're taking we're going to uh europe in um in april just her and i for 10 days to you know really cool places prague and um, vienna and budapest and it's going to be awesome and then so we always plan like one big trip, just just her and I a year, and then we plan a, a at least one family, if not multiple family trips a year. Yep. Yeah, and the big challenge, I mean, for us with younger kids, it's it's hard it's hard for us to get away, right? With like, you know, other support, right, and and, and watching the kids and, and all that stuff. So it's always a challenge to to kind of build around. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, you know, we were fortunate where um, we didn't ask constantly, but whenever Christine and I would go away, uh, either her mom or my mom uh, would come over and watch the kids when they were younger. And they would just they would like literally stay at our house or we would drop them at their house. Um, and I know not everybody has that. So you got to get more creative. But uh, but we were we were fortunate to have yeah. that that support.
and it, you know, it becomes easier, obviously, as they get older and self-sufficient. I mean, sure. Now your kids, like they're all teenagers, right? Like they probably want, you oh my gosh, 19, 16 and 14. Like we just, my wife and I, now we just leave. Like we don't even say anything and we'll get a call like hours later from one of our kids. Hey, <laughs> uh, it, that's right. That's right. And we're like, dude, we raise you. You're good. Like yeah, yeah. we're not worried. Yeah. We're, we're just out. We're out. Don't worry about us. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, I, I'm talking a little bit about abundance in a, in a second, or maybe you can talk about now, but I know part of that is the fan abundance, right? And have you participated in sure. any of those or can you speak a little bit about like yeah. the community? Oh man, I love fan abundance. Um, well, well, go abundance is a community of, uh, either there, there's two sides to go abundance. There's a, a go abundance men's and there's a go abundance women's. Um, I don't know if you know this, Brian, but I'm on the uh, tribal council, which is basically the board of trustees now for yeah. GoBundance, which is pretty cool to uh, have some influence in the tribe. But it's a community of of healthy, wealthy, generous men who choose to live epic lives. So that kind of is what GoBundance is in a nutshell. Um, and it's it's guys getting together to uh, talk about how we're going to be better versions of ourselves, the best versions of us, ourselves. Uh, but then there's an arm to GoBundance. And that's fan abundance, which is fantastic because a lot of fan abundance focuses on uh, connecting as a as a couple and then also how uh, parenting your kids, not just not just in, um, you know, what they're learning in school, but but helping your kids learn financial literacy. Mm. That part of Go abundance is so profound to me because they're not learning that stuff in in normal uh, academic settings. So GoBundance really helps to foster uh, kids creativity in becoming future entrepreneurs. Okay. What is that? I mean, I haven't been on any because my, you know, my oldest is six. So she's kind of on the younger, younger side, right? But, yeah. Perfect uh, time yeah. to start though. Yeah. So yeah. we, we got involved with FanBundance five years ago. So my oldest at that time was 14. Uh, Sylvie, who's 16, she was 11. Caleb, he was he was nine. Um, and actually coming off that first fan abundance event, all three of my kids read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That is super influential to, to mostly all of us who have read it. Uh, but to have your kids read that at such a young age. And then um, our oldest, uh, when he turned 16, he launched his first LLC. And I know that fan abundance had a big impact on uh, on him and the other two kids. Uh, and their entrepreneurial spirits. So it's pretty cool. So you, you basically get like three or four days with uh, a bunch of other amazing families and you come together and they'll break up the kids in age groups and uh, they'll talk to the kids, they'll speak to the kids about, um, you know, how you would talk to a six-year-old or, or an eight-year-old or a 12 year old or you know a 10 year old it all changes depending on their ages yep, but yep. they but there's all these activities and 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 then there's family bonding time where there's family activities uh that tr take place like we did like a high ropes course um in um shoot i forgot the area but we did a high ropes course for like two hours with the kids and it was cool because they have to climb up these these posts and then at the end they have to do this jump where it's like looks like 30 feet and you're jumping off so it's all about like conquering fear and and bonding as a family it's, it's pretty amazing hmm. That's cool. And six year old, you think there was other like kids in that age range? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there were babies there that you know, and babies. There, there, there's, yeah. there's. I'm an 18 month old too, or 20. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's babysitting, but more than just the kids is there's there's a lot of like um, couples bonding uh, stuff that that uh, fan abundance mixes in. So it's great. Um, I remember this one game we played, uh, Aaron Velke, who now actually runs fan abundance. He was newer to fan abundance at the time and had a, uh, it was like a cash flow game that he created okay. on, um, yeah, picking a profession in the beginning and working through it. And it, it was cool and all the kids were involved. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fun. Um, for anybody who's interested in learning about, more about abundance, John's one of the ambassadors or whatever you want to call it. So. You know, he helps talk to people, vet them, and make sure they're they're a good fit uh, in both ways, right? That's that's what yeah. it's about. Yeah, absolutely. Some people, I, I tell them, like, you know, they've got a high net worth. And, you know, one guy I was talking to uh, recently had a, had a very high net worth, and he was very comfortable. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm doing this and that. And this. I said, well, wh where's the traction in your life? And he, like, got silent. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, who's, who's, who's holding you accountable? Like, how are you growing? 
He's like, oh, well, I've, I've worked really hard my whole life to be comfortable. I said, okay, great. You, if you're comfortable, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Go Bunnings isn't for you. <laughs> but but then there's m- most other guys that do apply. Um, they do want that high level of accountability. They do want that traction. They do want to be surrounded by like-minded men. Um, and th- those are the type of members that we look for. And those are the type of members that, yeah, I'll send them a link and I'll say, look, you know, let's fill out this link. Let, let's, let's bring you as a member because I think it will be great. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a national ambassador and, and, you know, anybody can connect with me. I'd be happy to, to talk more about GoBundance. Yep. Awesome. And um, it's the final topic here. Let's talk about your, the, the podcast. So you, you got uh, invited uh, by our, our mutual friend, Josh McCallan to be a co-host of Capital Hacking, which is, you know, a very good podcast. I've been on it multiple times, a lot of great guests. So, I mean, can you talk to me about maybe, I don't know, just from your side of it, of what it was like, you never like, I don't think you even you are like one podcast yourself prior to that. Right. So like <laughs> then you get started into it and then like now, I mean, you have a great time and you guys are, you know, great. And maybe talk about, I don't know what it was like. And then, you know, some of the things you've learned by kind of interviewing yeah. all these, these really cool people. So uh, let's get back to one sheets. <laughs> so I had a goal uh, on my 2022 one sheet to jump on. I-, I said 10, by the way, I didn't hit 10 different podcasts. I did hit a bunch and I did record over 10 podcasts in 2022. But but here's what's cool. So my friend, our friend, I want to say, because you probably know Brian Lubin as well. He's yeah, another good one. Yeah, he's a better great. Brian, but yeah. It's- yeah. <laughs> well, you have two B's versus, you know, yeah, one. that's right. Yeah, so it's more powerful. Um, but but Brian invited me to be on Action Academy podcast, and uh, I talked about how I became financially free on that podcast. And uh, I had no idea, but Josh McAllen ended up listening to that particular podcast and just called me out of the blue. I, By the way, I never thought I'd be co-hosting a podcast. So he calls me up, he goes, John, I, I got a question for you. I said, what's up, Josh? And, and we've been friends for years. I have have a lot of respect for Josh. And uh, he said, hey, man, uh, I need I need a co-host. I think with your energy, we will crush this space. I'm like, co-host for what? He's like, for capital hacking. I said, Josh, I know nothing about podcasts. I don't know how to interview people. I don't know anything. He goes, dude, you're natural. You'll be great. Let's do it. I said, I said, I'll tell you what, man, I, I always say yes and figure it out later anyway. That's kind of how I've lived my life. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and for the most part, it works out. So I said, all right, so w- let's set up our first four interviews. I said, if it goes well, I'll keep doing it. And if we fall on our face or if I fall on my face, you won't. Yeah. I said, then we'll forget about it. We'll just scratch the interviews and, and we'll just move on and shake hands and say thanks. Um, dude, we had an absolute blast on our first four interviews and we have not looked back. And actually today, um, a new podcast just dropped for Capital Hacking uh, and it is with Travis Bell, who we've become good friends, Trav Bell. He's from Australia. He is known as the bucket list guy. So if you literally Google the bucket list guy, Trav Bell will, will come up. He has millions of views of his TED talk on, um, on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, he talks about uh, a bucket list, how to create a proper bucket list, and uh, talks about his life story on how he became the bucket list guy. So that dropped today. Um, but but yeah, we've been able to interview amazing, amazing people. Brian, I'm looking forward to getting you back yeah. on the show. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be interviewing uh, Maddie Faircloth, who wrote a book uh, called Raising Private Capital from um, our friends over at... Um, uh, what's yeah, bigger pockets, right? The biggest podcast ever. So he 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 wrote it for bigger pockets. Uh, I'll be interviewing uh, my good friend John Rulin, who wrote a book called Giftology. Yep. He's yep. like a Got keynote speaker. Guy. Yeah, super super powerful dude. The funny yeah, thing yeah. is, I remember when like twenty years ago, when he'd be in the area, like John, can I crash into your house and I'd make him pancakes in the oh, morning? Okay, well, that's yeah, John Rulin. He's like. Yeah, 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 he's like world famous now. We know each other from Cutco from 20 some years ago. But uh, yeah, so I'll be interviewing him. And it's just really fun interviewing your friends and, and other powerful people and getting to know them. Yeah. What do you learn? Any any specific things you picked up on how to, to conduct better interviews, better questions to ask, like things to dive into, things to avoid, any any. I don't know, thoughts on well that's a great question so sometimes i still in the beginning i really found myself doing this um where we're interviewing somebody and i'm literally like taking it in myself and taking all these notes 
and like forgetting to ask a question. So thankfully, Josh is so seasoned that if there's like a little bit of dead space, he comes up with some amazing question to ask or follow up on or or hit on whatever was just highlighted. And so for like the first, I'd say eight interviews, I'm kind of like taking notes. Now we've done like 20 some and now I'm like, I'm on it. I've really learned from Josh that there shouldn't be any dead space and how to ask like great uh, open-ended questions that'll benefit our listeners. Um, but in the beginning, yeah, I was almost like on the sidelines, like learning for myself and so like caught up in it that I'd forget to ask a question. Yep. Yeah. I'm, uh, I got, so I'm up to, well, I have 121 out. So I've recorded, I don't know, obviously more than that, but, uh, yeah, it definitely, you get better over time. I think the note taking, like I take notes too. And like, or if, if a question comes up, I'll like write it down and circle it so they can come back to it. Cause sometimes like someone will have a ton of good stuff and you have like a question about something that you want to unpack and then you really kind of have to circle back because they might have mul- multiple things. Right. And, um, there's a really good book. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like, un- it's, it's like peeling an onion, man. Like, uh, like yeah. getting, getting through it. Like, cause there's so, some guys will just, they'll just go on and, yeah, and, on and like you just said, there's you gotta like, you gotta like, yeah, like try to like nicely shut them up. But yeah. And, but like, there's 10 great imagine. things that they said. Yep. Yep. And you want to like hit the pause. There's a, there's a great book. Uh, it's called Stop Asking Questions. Um, have you have you read that one? I have so not read that. It out. It's, a, it's a small book. It's by this guy. I, I, I forget his name. It's Andrew, Andrew something, who's a podcast host of, of one of the biggest like tech podcasts out there. And so it's a book on how to be like a better podcast uh, interviewer. And so it's called Stop Asking Questions because the idea is more about like you're having this conversation and you're having comments and dialogue and you know it's not just like question answer question answer question it's not like like you're like writing an article or something it's you're having a conversation uh and it goes both ways but he he has some really good stuff in there about um like the filler questions and stuff it's like you get stuck you've got like a couple of these questions like i don't i don't don't give away all my secrets but like you know a failure what's a failure in your life or is there a mentor that you've had like you kind of have these go-to questions you can kind of pivot to and then that'll create some more stuff and then you can kind of like get back on track but, uh, yeah, I love I love that. Here's a tidbit for uh, for the listeners here. Uh, when we interviewed Nick Uhas, you listened to it, Brian, yep. and you reminded me about a great book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, which I am halfway through this book now and I'm loving it. So if you're listening and you want to do a- amazingly better in your life, listen to this Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And you know, I was blown away when it talks about even the beginning, the first chapter talking about quantum physics and how that works and yeah. visualization and um, just it's it's just wild. It's mind blowing. This book is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And yeah, it connects back like the visualizations, affirmations, all this stuff like Morning Miracle. All these guys talk about. Some people think it's hocus pocus. The book like ties the sign, like the the whatever the brain neurology, whatever stuff like the chemical reactions to the affirmations and visualization and, and why it like actually does work. Like there's like this, there's this whole science behind it. So he, he is the first book I ever read where someone actually can like break it down and find the correlation. So I, don't know, I thought it was interesting. But, yeah. And I'm going to have to go through this a few more times. It is, it is complex. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. You know, we touched on a lot of different things, but you got a lot of cool stuff going on and pretty cool of kind of the evolution, um, you know, you've created from, you know, starting the bottom, trading your time for money and kind of building this business and, you know, mindset and putting the, the family and being a father like comes above everything else. I think that's, you know, that's what we all are striving to do and you you live it. And so I think you're you're an inspiration to a lot of people. And it's awesome that you're on a podcast sharing your ideas and you know, can impact even more people. So Brian, thank you uh, so much. Thank you for having me on business with beers, although we didn't have any beers. I'm totally actually currently right. doing the 75 hard, uh, so I can't have a beer until St. Patty's Day. Like literally, how did that happen, right? That yeah, must have been yeah. intentional for me been, to yeah. <laughs> day 75 the day before St. Patty's Day That's makes right. sense. But, uh, and, uh, I'm looking where can people connect, connect with you if they want to learn about GoBundance, they want to listen to your podcast, they want to talk to you about something, where can they find it? Absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, you can find me on Facebook at John Edwin, J-O-H-N-E-D-W-I-N. Uh, you can find me on um, Instagram at Strength Personal Training, or you can type in my name, John Edwin. Um, you can also shoot me an email at John, J-O-H-N dot Edwin, E-D-W-I-N, John dot Edwin at GoBundance.com. And I'd be happy to, uh, you know, help you with whatever you want. Or if you have questions about GoBundance, uh, I'd be happy to help you with that too. Awesome. And they can listen to you on Capital Hacking, uh, yep. Josh. Uh, on all yep. Major Capital platforms. Hacking. We're on Spotify. We're on uh, Apple. We're on all the different yeah, platforms. Everything. So, awesome. Well, you have a, you have a great day. Go Eagles. 
And uh, go birds. Yeah. All right. Thanks, yeah. Brian. Yeah, bye. That's all we got for this episode with the Business with Beers podcast. One thing that would really help both us and other new potential listeners is to rate the show and leave a comment in iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen. Also, make sure to link up with me on your preferred social media platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can find all my links at brianbeers.com. Please just share the podcast with anyone who you think might enjoy it. And until next time, remember to take the actions others won't to live the life that others don't. 